in part A we've applied conservation of mechanical energy and we have defined the zero P level being at the fixed point capital O. At this point there's no gravitational potential energy, there's no elastic potential energy and there's no kinetic energy since the object just reaches this point capital O and that's why we have zero on one side of the equation. On the opposite side we have the original Ke is zero the gravitational potential energy is going to be negative because it's below our arbitrary PE level, so that's why it's negative mg times the h. And we also have the elastic potential of the string, which has been found by using lambda x squared over 2L. And this equation will then lead us to the fact that lambda is 117.6. In part two, we are again applying conservation mechanical energy and again we're comparing it to the position of O and that's why again there is a zero in this case on the left hand side of the equation. On the right hand side we have the kinetic energy when it's four and a half meters below O. We have the gravitational potential energy and again it's negative since it's below our arbitrary P at P equals zero level and we have the elastic potential energy which is found again by using lambda x squared over 2L and from this equation we obtain the value of V. At maximum speed there's zero acceleration. Therefore we can resolve parallel to the plane. The weight component of the object must equal the tension in the string when the acceleration is zero and to find the tension in the string we can apply Hooke's law and this enables us to work out the extension is 0.8 as required. In part two, we are applying conservation mechanical energy. We're comparing the initial position to when the string has an extension of 0.8 meters, with therefore when the object is at its maximum speed. In both cases, we can work out the elastic potential energy, the gravitational potential energy, and the kinetic energy for the object. And in part three, we once again apply conservation mechanical energy. If we're looking for maximum displacement, the object is instantaneously at rest and we can therefore compare again all of the energy in the initial position to the energy in when we have maximum displacement. In part A, we're going to use conservation mechanical energy. We can let the zero PE level be in the initial position there's no kinetic energy and there's no elastic potential energy, hence there's no energy initially. When it's at instantaneous rest, we can work out expressions for the elastic potential energy, the gravitational potential energy, and that'll be negative because it's below our zero P level, and there's zero Ke because it's instantaneously at rest. This enables us to create an equation and work out the value of lambda. In part B, we are once again going to use conservation mechanical energy, comparing this given position again to the original position when there was no energy in the system. We first of all need to work out the height that the object has dropped, the vertical height it's dropped, and we can do that by using Pythagoras. We can then work out expressions for the kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy, and equate these to the zero energy initially to enable us to work out the speed in the required position.